my guest today is Jatin Dalal, President and CFO at Wipro. Uh, Wipro came out with uh, Q2 numbers, which uh, uh, revenues were uh, higher at the higher end of the guidance. Uh, Jatin, welcome to uh, Bloomberg Quint. To begin with, you know, uh, your Q1 to Q2 growth was 5 to 7 percent guidance. Your Q2 to Q3 is 2 to 4 percent. Why is that? Yeah, sure. So, Sajid, so the answer is fairly straightforward. We we had uh, we had an additional month of integration of Capco when we were giving guiding you for quarter two, and that was factored into our guidance uh, for quarter two when we guided five to seven percent. Uh, uh, and uh, there is all complete consolidation of Capco, which has already taken place in quarter two. So there is no incremental consolidation. So what you see is is uh, is really uh, organic revenue, except for one month revenue of of MPN, which was a very small acquisition. So it's it's really as close to organic guidance that uh, that one could get in a in a current scenario. So therefore, you it is reflection of the organic rhythm. We have delivered a four and a half percent organic revenue in quarter one and four point six percent in quarter two. So we are seeing strong rhythm. Uh, this is the guidance as we see for uh, as we see uh, for quarter three, and uh, we remain uh, quite uh, optimistic around the current demand trend and and uh, what it can what it can generate as as opportunities for us. You know, even if you look at the organic part of it, it's 4.1 and 4.6. You said your guidance is between two and four percent, which is a little conservative in that sense. Uh, what are the headwinds that you're seeing uh, when you go into Q3? So there is uh, no real, uh, uh, there is no, first of all, there is no conservatism. This is what we see today. Uh, yes, there, there is always a seasonality which plays out in quarter three, as you know. Uh, there, are, there are days when customers don't work in December, uh, which are called furloughs, and those do play out. That has been factored in our, our, our guidance as, as we have guided. Okay. Uh, and... Uh... That's why you're saying uh, you're giving a two to four percent uh, guidance revenue guidance there. But uh, what is the kind of cost challenges that is coming in? Because Capco had uh, lower margins, if I'm not wrong, uh, and that would have put some pressure. And you have already said that there would be some pressure on your margins going forward. What kind of uh, cost challenges and margin challenges coming in after Capco integration? So Capco dilution because they operated at a lower margin and more importantly. Uh, the margins um, get also impacted because the amortization of intangibles, some of those acquisition related accounting uh, that we that we need to do. Uh, so so we had guided that Capco would, would impact our operating margins by by approximately two percent. Some of that has already happened in by the end of quarter two because we had full consolidation of Capco margins uh, by quarter two. But there would be some. Uh, you know, uh, you you would have to continue to watch and see what where where we finally stabilize. But but the point um, uh, point on margin pressure, I think margin pressure really is uh, is from the from uh, uh, from the current demand environment, which is creating supply constraint, and therefore uh, you need to invest in your talent. That's where the uh, that's where the where the I would say impact on on immediate margins is is on the investment that you need to make in the talent right now. Uh, that's the challenge I think it's there for the entire industry because in Q2 uh, I think almost most of your peers have also been taken by surprise the kind of uh, wage pressure which is coming in uh, you know the kind of attrition rates have, have gone up for most of the players there. What kind of investments are you making there and given that you are now moving into a hybrid kind of model uh, will you be able to mitigate some of the pressures with respect to infra costs and others? Uh, well, uh, first I will talk about talent and then I'll come on hybrid model. On talent, I would say we have given uh, an additional salary increase to our junior staff on 1st September and that has been very well received. Uh, 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 there is no uh, there, there is there is no big uh, salary and there is no additional salary increase which is planned we have had three salary increases in last nine months so it's been uh, it's been uh, it has been investment time in talent for 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 last three quarters um, we will see uh, we will we will continue to see some amount of 
a pressure on attrition and this is not reflection of 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 an organization but reflection of the industry the pressure in the industry that is persisting uh, given the the sheer supply and demand challenge that we have in in at at, at a at a, at a macro level but also at micro level in certain segments and certain skill sets so that would continue to play out for some time until the sufficient number of new supply being created and which is happening you know which is happening at a at a very rapid pace as all of us continue to onboard many many more freshers than we have done historically where do you see attrition rate uh, peaking out uh, for uh, in the next uh next one or two quarters i assume you may have some kind of uh, idea of it uh, 20.5 is so, a so, high uh, ttm yeah so so the uh, you know uh, we believe we are we are in 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 a in a zone which is which is uh, which is uh, intense and this zone uh, will continue for some time it's difficult to comment on numbers uh, it's it's not going to be i mean it's going to be uh, in this intense zone and it could be one percentage higher or one percentage lower uh, but it is going to persist for a couple of quarters is what we see it's difficult to call uh, you know we you know we have, we just find comfort in numbers but it's difficult to call some of these numbers out yeah. no uh, my my point is uh, uh, practically on the kind of uh, you know which level you are getting that attrition also and also that will it lead to the base salary for the industry also going up because uh, you know the demand for, uh, uh, for the talent is high the supply is skewed in that sense uh, for a long time the base salaries were stable will this lead to the base salary for the industry going up uh, i uh, see the week difficult to comment uh, beyond a point on what will happen but the way i see it is uh, Uh, the way we are always seen in, in you know in in it industry whenever we have gone through a phase of high growth the industry has been able to create supply for itself uh, and and it did not have to resort to uh, paying um, uh, paying more salaries etc because that you know, that doesn't solve the problem you know it uh, your 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 challenge is that you need to grow as an industry and if that is the challenge you need more supply um, paying more salaries is not going to solve the problem of of catering to that demand it may at best uh, create uh, an artificially lower attrition number for one player for a quarter and another player for another quarter but it won't sustain so the idea and therefore we didn't cap ourselves at where we were in 2006 uh, you know 15 years from there on we still are serving uh, we we continue to grow very well and that the beauty of that model is really creating a uh, generating supply as we see demand only the disconnect which we which we so we are seeing this time is is really the fact that uh, from a from a very low growth which was fy 2021 we are suddenly in a very high growth zone which is 21 22 and that's why you are seeing this tension but i am very confident that industry knows how to deal with it in terms of creating supply and we will create the supply and do you think that this high growth which you see in fy 22 uh sustaining over a couple of multiple years or is it uh, is is this short term opportunity and that's why there's a demand which is suddenly coming in and so supply crunch comes in or you know it's is it a long term long- or medium term growth phenomena which is going for the industry as we speak let, let me let me tell you three things number one is the 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 infrastructure uh, applications are moving on cloud and that is an irreversible trend it will continue to happen that's number one number two is business models uh, how a business interacts with its suppliers how it interacts with its customer is becoming more and more and more uh digital as against physical and that we have seen that's been the reality of pandemic world like that's a second trend uh and the third is uh, for example cyber security you know you are going to need more and more and more security going forward because they are going to have more and more and more sophistication in in the way you could get uh, you know impacted by it so some of this trend if you put it on the paper and see you know aggregate answer to that is that uh, you know this this uh, this situation of high need of it services is going to sustain for some time so 
if that is the case then uh, you know we have been seeing good amount of contracts uh, getting uh, coming to your way uh, you know you did couple of contracts in this quarter as well but if you look at the industry and uh, from your end as well the tcv for the quarter is softening a bit or you know there's a decline which is coming on a quarterly basis is it a temporary thing uh, mega deals are not coming through much uh, i mean that's the commentary coming from all uh, big players uh, though they are they maybe they're taking time to close it seems but medium and small deals and diversified deals are one which is which is coming out now more so how do you see this play out we see it playing out uh, uh, you know um, in a way that at least in quarter 2 we saw more medium size and, and smaller deals uh, but we still grew our tcv for first half at an, at a healthy 19% uh, so it is it is it is a, it is healthy growth in tcv uh it is it is in line in some form little ahead of our first half revenue growth which which would be around uh, on an organic basis would be would be uh, whatever 16 17% um and um, uh, so so the, there is there is a uh, there is sufficient business coming our way um uh, we see going forward mega deals in the pipeline uh, and they will close i think the sell cycle will have to see how they pan out but right now as as you only mentions and there is no scarcity of demand uh, which is there in the industry so we should um, in some form uh, not worry whether it is coming as 300 million dollar deal or 200 million dollar deal it's a business customer wants to do with us and we should accept uh, that as the trend and and execute on that trend so is talent the only variable here which will impact the execution of this deal for you or for anyone uh, so you know it's a it's an important uh, question i would say um, uh, yes and no both uh, yes because that's the basic ingredient for 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 solution uh, or catering to demand in our industry uh, and and the point i want to highlight here is while we can talk about uh, attrition and 20% and how how that is you know quite intense which which it is there is no question about it but uh, but we have added 10000 plus net headcount in in the current quarter which means we are not only able to uh, backfill uh, for our attrition but also we are able to get talent ahead of time for for the growth needs of the organization and i think that's what is the differentiator in in the current times so uh, so that is uh, Uh, so i would look at as attractiveness of a of an organization is the differentiator in in the current times apart from very here and now requirement on a project for for a few for a few specific skill sets how do you see some of the big verticals playing out uh, bfsi uh, we saw good amount of traction coming in the last three quarters uh, you know banking especially you know uh, digital transformation customer uh, uh, how customer or bank on customer interface a digital interface transformation deals coming in do you see some kind of uh, slowdown or sluggishness coming in now that uh, the big ones are through and uh, it's now the execution phase so i'm just looking at the cycle is, is it a cycle which we are looking at so i i, I will share uh, uh, you know from our data sheet if you can go and see the sectors growth you would find that Uh, of our seven sectors you know f- uh, five are upwards of 25% 23% growth and the highest being 43% for bfsi right why for quarter 2 over quarter 2 of last year of course this this has addition of capco in bfsi so you could you could say there is some addition there but but even otherwise consumer you see 37.7 there is no addition of capco there but it's a 37% growth so it's very very healthy quarter the two segments which are sec, uh, which are sectors which are below is 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 health which is which has grown 10% which in any other year would have been a fabulous number but it is not in the current year but we are confident it would pick up we we are very confident but because if you go back and see the sequential growth in the current quarter that's that's about 5% sequential so it would pick up only the one which which has remained slightly muted is manufacturing and manufacturing because uh, manufacturing was virtually the last industry to come back uh, 
on on full speed if, if that's if that's the way to describe it some of the essential manufacturing continue to operate throughout pandemic but at the same time a lot of non essential manufacturing was on on back burner so as an industry it has come on full steam only few months back so i think manufacturing we are happy with the progress we have made but i think we can do even better in 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 future so you know so my uh, point is that you know i agree that manufacturing comes towards the end but uh, do you see uh, uh, the risk of slow down coming in in some format uh, and there is a lot of deal which is there uh, there is some bit of talks about how now cyber security and consulting is something which may emerge going forward how are you placed there uh, and you see more opportunities like capco coming uh, in front of you uh, yeah uh, so first of all uh, we can as i said we continue to see good demand environment going forward um consulting is in our assessment one of our biggest opportunities as an industry and more specifically wipro and therefore we have invested in in capco uh capco has done very well so we, we at least based on the initial couple of quarters we feel very very happy about the fact that we went ahead with the acquisition and the way it has it has it has panned out for us uh so yes uh, uh, we do believe uh, play, things like uh, consulting is is the is the need of tomorrow and and therefore we have invested in it today and and so far it has been a, a, it has turned out quite well so if if you look uh, jatin i am asking you to if you look at uh, uh, the environment today where do you see the risk coming in from is it uh, slow down of dem- uh, of of opportunities which is there in form of tr- digital transformation or talent or you know is it uh, other cost factors which will start coming in travel hasn't started much for many of the it companies and eventually as travel starts you'll see that pressure coming on you as well on your margins coming in as well so far you had the question of work from home so the travel and others is not something which is impacting many of the it companies but what kind of impact do you see as a result of that so so sajid uh, right now i think the real uh, uh, real risk is the uh, is is some of the cost coming back but you know you have to see what you define as risk if you have great demand and if you have great customer need and you are serving them well and therefore you have to incur little more cost is that a real risk to your business it is probably not you will gain market share you will become more successful uh you will create absolute more profit because you may have percentages which which could be slightly impacted but if you are doing it on much higher revenue scale your absolute profit increase so shareholder gain you know is is uh, is benefited out of that so uh, i i i would say right now i mean the real risk to any business is demand risk uh, really nothing else um supply risk yes but i am very proud the way we have managed it so far and i am confident we will continue to manage that uh and and cost risk will always be impact of inflation changing business model etc which we have to deal with uh, if we are if we if we are a, if we are a large player like like we are so did i have to go uh, I, for the earnings my final my, my final thing is that is, is it going to be, uh, going to be uh, uh, pressure on your margin given given that uh, you know you have this actual cost coming into it and 17.8% which you have done will you be able to to maintain 18 level 18% level or is there is a risk of that going to lower we have what we have said sir is that in medium term and i am not commenting on quarter because quarter, every quarter has area of investment and area of saving so it's difficult to call a quarter but medium term we think 17 to 17 and a half we can sustain but uh, yes there will be there will be quarters where like this where we have done better uh, and uh, and every quarter we have to take it in his stride and see where we land jatin thank you very much for joining us on bloomberg coin have a nice evening thank you sajid excellent to talk with you as always take care thank you bye